Hello, so my name is Rich Bachelor, and I'm looking forward to spending a bit of time sharing with you some of my thoughts, my insights, my challenges, um, all the different things I've been involved with uh, from a change management point of view, and obviously sharing with you some of the insights and thoughts I have from the connection between whether we call it corporate academia or learning and practice or or really about how things are happening around the world from my own viewpoints and my own experiences that I'm finding as things are going forward. Um, so just to put a bit of perspective onto this and share with you a little bit about my background. Um, so having spent over 27 years doing working change, I often look back and see how some of the earlier change activities that I was involved with didn't have the change label attached to them. It wasn't like change management, um, people change management, organisational change. None of those labels are really being used in the workplace. Um, so I spent the first 18 years of my career working for UK government. And during that time, um, very, very quickly, I was brought in to help people deal with change. Um, because for some reason, people seem to get on with me and listen to me and understand and whatever. Um, but what was fascinating for me is that the very first sort of five or six years of activity that I did, I was never labelled with doing change management. I was actually labelled with trying to make people happy about things that they may not otherwise be happy about. So, for instance, there was an office closure, people merging into an office. I was asked to go and make these people happy about relocating and moving around and things like that. And then later on, there were other things around changes in office structures, obviously multiple, multiple technology implementations. You know, I, I remember being the, the person leading the way when, uh, you know, we went to coloured monitors and we went to mice and we went to all sorts of other things in the technology space, as well as all the different software pieces that were coming up. Um, but I was fortunate in the last sort of four or five years that I worked in UK government that not only was I able to develop um, change management presence because by that time in the sort of mid 2000s, the naming convention, the idea, the, the labeling was starting to come to prominence and known by people. Um, but it also enabled me and the employer at the time enabled me to go and actually do my master's in change management. And it was an interesting experience for me because that experience took me back to the academia that I'd left many, many years before. And when I went back to looking at theories and developing ideas and challenging hypotheses and all of this side of stuff when I was doing that programme, it really made me realise the, the balance that we have between the doing of change and supporting people through change and all the theories of the psychology and the emotional versus analytical and scientific you know information that's around and available and also actually how immature it was uh, and still is unfortunately I think myself um, because it's not something that is hugely time invested by academia from my own insights um, and yet it's something that people really need to be thinking about because I think the whole human centric relationship piece is something that we need to be thinking about going forward. Um, that's the only way that you know organisations are going to succeed in the future. So just to bring you up to speed, so for the last, um, oh gosh, actually 10 Ten years I've been in Canada, so February 2010 I've been in, I moved to Canada, and I very quickly set up my own company and I've been doing stuff in the consulting space um, uh, for my own company, and I've also developed learning activities and things like that. Um, but as well as doing the consulting side of things, um, I've also been involved quite a bit with institutions of higher education here, and I've worked as a consultant to an institution of higher education here in Toronto. 
and supported a couple of others going through changes for a whole range of reasons, bridging the gap between the academic, non-academic, administrative, the, the whole range of things in that side. And then I've also done a lot of stuff um, working as a professor, a teacher, an instructor within institutions. Um, I'm currently involved with three higher education institutions. Um, two of them, I work on their um, advisory council for program development. And I've been working with uh, one which is Northeastern University, um, who actually have created a campus in Toronto. And they are developing a kind of project management master's program that goes beyond the practical of project management. It's much more of a, a leadership focus and change management aspect. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more to bringing those two words together in a moment. Um, but similarly, um, the George Brown College that I'm also a uh, teacher regularly and everything like that, I'm actually just... Um, been assigned to develop as part of their program, advisory council and uh, faculty, a change management course um, that they want to roll out to their grad students and help them to actually uh, understand what it means to deal with um, the people side of change and not just focus on delivering the technical product that you often get with project management focuses. So I thought I'd kind of start my conversation off a little bit more after I've given you the boring background piece um, with a conversation that came to light with me at a conference recently. The whole idea of hard and soft change management. And I suppose I've never realized this before, but there's kind of like two camps of people that work in the change management space. There's those people who do the hard change management. And by hard change management, I mean people who actually, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they may be process driven. They have a set formula, a set process, and they actually say, okay, we are going to implement technology, whatever it may be, a new technology, a new activity, a new process. And to do so, we are going to um, follow this pattern, this template, shall we say. And these are people that typically have maybe come from a project management background, that have come from uh, process improvement background. Again, a very analytical mindset. And they are looking for a sequence or series of activities to follow to do change management so that change management is done um, through saying we've gone A, B, C, D, E, whatever it may be, and all those things have been done. And I find that fascinating because, um, and I'll talk a little bit about different parts of the world and everything a little bit later in my sharing here, but this idea that change can be delivered through the application of a set process and every change can have a same process applied to it is something that troubles me and it's something that I think is part of the problem of having a lot of quick fix mentalities to try and sort out change management. But perhaps for me and my own experience and my own activity, I'm much more in that sort of soft change management space, I suppose. I, I, and let, let me describe to you what I mean by soft change management. Um, because I think as well, this is where academia comes in and the, the actual work that's going on in academia is much more supportive of what I call a soft change management. Whereas I think the, the hard change management is much more the corporate fixing type activity. So when we actually talk about soft change management, I'm talking about maybe a more holistic development 
um, something where people look at the bigger picture and develop uh, learning interventions, facilitation techniques, experiences for individuals that actually begin by understanding the impact of the change on the people that you're going to be working with, not actually um, looking at how am I going to fit this change into this process. Um, and I think why I talk about that a bit more, it, it appeals to me more so because I think it's more people focused. But the other thing I think I find fascinating about this is that um, from a change point of view, it's a lot more responsive and reflective of expectations of individuals. So to that point, I think soft change management, as we might call it, is something where development of activities, development of requirements, development of responses and considerations to the way people react to a change are built up on a case-by-case -case basis, maybe with some fundamental um, pieces of consideration, you know, looking at what's the current state, what's happening, how are people feeling about the current state, what do they think do they mean for the future state, and building that step. But I think why I separate this is because people who are focused maybe more on that softer change management piece are people who are looking at leadership development, organizational development, strategy execution, um, spaces that are perhaps more people focused and they're in a, like a learning and development type stuff. Um, I, and I think what I'm noticing is that this is a space that allows people to really dig into responses to change. And as they dig into that response to change, they're actually discovering that, you know, is change management about managing change or is change management about leading people through the change and that brings that circle round to the focus on leadership and academically i've seen with some of the institutions in north america that are struggling to get their head around change management it's because a lot of the people coming into that space in north america particularly are coming from that harder space yet academia typically has had more focus on that organizational behavior organizational development leadership type exploration and we're missing the matchup piece on this and I, i'm kind of curious and maybe you want to have a bit of a, a conversation about this yourselves um before i go on to further pieces here to think about what we mean by hard and soft and where are academia more comfortable are they more comfortable in the exploration and digging and delving into the leadership organizational development behavioral type aspects or are they looking for process driven pieces i personally think that um, most academics that I've come across and people developing programs in higher ed institutions are looking at that softer side of things. And that gives them the opportunity to do quality research into how will this group of people respond when presented with this situation and what are they looking for to help them more successfully enable this um and i think uh, and i'm thinking about this as i'm talking to you as well maybe soft is change management and hard is more about managing change and 
even though you need both together for successful change, maybe that's where there's a, a disconnect. So what, what, what do you think? What, what are your thoughts on the, the hard and soft? Have you ever thought about it? Um, is it something that you would consider from the work that you do as being more anchored in a hard change management or a soft change management? And do you think one or the other is more prevalent in corporate or academic? So I'm hoping you've had a pause at that moment in time and maybe had a bit of a conversation about that stuff. Um, and I'm going to kind of play on with a little bit further into the academic side of things now from my own experience as a, a teacher and deliverer and working with academics. And I think it's only a kind of brief piece that I want to talk about here, but the challenge that we have is that students who are seeking to study are seeking more and more often to have content that has real world application that puts them in a position to actually get a job, do a job as soon as they finish their studies. And as such, they are looking for opportunities to do a subject matter that they think is transferable straight away into the workplace. And I think we have a challenge with change management in that point of view, because we still have a challenge in the workplace for people to recognise the value of it. Um, there are still many, many organisations I have conversations with, with my consulting hat on, that talk about, oh, well, you know, do we really need this? Surely people need to realise that if they want to keep their job, they need to change the way they do things. Do we really need to be developing stuff? You know, as long as we do a bit of training with people and show them how to use the systems that we're bringing in or show them where the new thing is or the new organisation structure, whatever it may be, then um, we're, we're good to go. And actually explaining the whole purpose of change management to these people means that somebody going into the workplace and saying, oh, I've just finished my graduate program in change management and I can help you. And they kind of go, yeah, how? And somebody says, well, you know, I help your people to adopt to new things, blah, blah, blah. And they kind of get a bit confused with what's doing. And I think we're only going to really be successfully developing more change management presence and development of education in change management as we go forward and get organizations to understand its value. And it's still work that has to be done. Um, you know, I, I still find that probably more, actually more, more times than not, I'm still explaining to potential clients what change management is and how they can benefit from its presence in their organization. So until we can move away from that challenging conversation, we're not really going to get the same enthusiasm, should we say, um, unless we are able to evidence the benefits of studying a change management um, graduate program, doing research into it and doing the outcomes and finding and proving things and that side of stuff. So I, I just wonder what your experiences have been when you've had conversations with students about applying their knowledge to the real world. Is it something that we are able to do? Are we able to explain the benefits? Are we able to explain what does the potential student go away with after they studied a change management course? Something to think about.
so finally I just wanted to share some of my own experiences and thoughts about change management across the world. Um, I, I'm very fortunate that I've had a lot of global exposure and you know, as I mentioned, I originated from the UK and I've had quite a bit of European exposure. And then I've been based in North America for the last 10 years. And I've also had a lot of opportunities to work with global companies that have got multiple locations and things like that. And also work with people in all sorts of places around the world, etc. Also through my time working with um, the Association of Change Management Professionals and supporting and coaching the setup of chapters across the world. It was a, a fascinating experience for me to see different perceptions of change management and how different people might define change management in different parts of the world. So I'm going to just maybe talk a little bit first and foremost about North America because that's kind of like my my space at the moment predominantly um, and then I'm going to just maybe share a little bit of differences and things like that um, going forward. So I think predominantly in North America change management is focused around the, the hard change management I mentioned before a lot of people want to have a book of templates a sequence of activities a process to follow that allows them to say that they've done change management um unfortunately that's because a lot of people i find in north america come into the change management space purely from a project management background it's almost like they've spent time delivering technical whatever it is that they've delivered and that's left them in a, a space that's kind of made them think okay now how do i tag on to that project management piece something that talks to the people and they go away they do a course and there's probably a good half a dozen different courses floating around for like three or four days five days whatever it may be and then they come back and go okay now i have my nice little folder or my booklet or my set of information online and i just apply that when i'm running a project and that will allow me to do change management and the challenge with this is that um, when these people are put in a change management position, they actually are not people focused. And this causes challenges. But they just keep pushing at it. And... I would say that probably about 80% of change management activity in North America is focused on the process of change management and the formula, the template, the structural delivery piece. And academically, I see this starting to leak into institutions because, you know, there's not many institutions in North America that deliver change management courses yes sort of like modules within a, a bigger mba program or something that's going on in a you know leadership development sort of um you know um th there's a university in toronto that does like organizational behavior and leadership and they have quite a strong element of change management activity but what's happening is that the people that are being brought into the academic institutions from the real world to teach these subjects are coming in with these same biases. And these biases are then being shared on and shared forward so that the institutional teaching is actually... Um, being driven by people who are set in these ways. There are some spaces where they're pushing back against that. You know, I see some of the leadership work and some of the organizational behavior work um, that are pushing back against that process stuff. Um, across Canada, which I know better than maybe some of the US spaces, um, you have Royal Roads University who has amazing 
um, leadership change, organizational behavior, uh, master's programs and graduate certificates and all that sort of stuff that really look into the um, theories as well as the practicum of actually putting these things into place. Um, my side of the country, because Royal Roads is in Victoria, so way out west, um, my side of the country around Toronto area, you have York University, who's got a big organisational behaviour, part of their Schulich Business School. Um, you've got Rotman that does a leading change graduate programme that's very well respected. Um, and then you have some other institutions that are incorporating some of these things. And you're seeing the more tenured um, professors pushing back against the the new part-time profs that are coming in and teaching this stuff and it's a fascinating kind of um, spectator sport I suppose um, to see this coming out and I'm, I'm still not sure who's going to win out in the end on this stuff um, but I'm pleased that both conversations are taking place and that people are not saying it's one or the other but it can actually be both um, in the US, I think, again, it plays to the quick fix mentality and that really helps to go forward with what people need to do and how it works and things like that. Um, so I think for myself, um, my, my insight on how academic institutions are developing change management are still in the balance in North America and it's still the balance between who's going to win out the instructors coming in with practical corporate experience who've been brought up and developed their skill set in a hard change management piece or is it going to be those that have maybe had more academic research focused behavioral human centric type stuff that are pushing to make individual interventions and experiences and and create approaches and strategies for change that are built on each change that comes along i, I don't know I, I really don't know um what i would say is from my own experience um not just in north america but in europe Australia and some other areas that are what we might typically refer to as developed world locations. I'm seeing that their approach to change management is a lot more of a, a nice balance between soft and hard. There's much more investment in institutions to do the soft work, but still create something that has a, a hard framework, should we say, to enable these things to be applied and taken forward. Um, I'm curious myself going forward, and maybe as I'm coming to the end now of a piece that I want to share with you, um, I've started recently doing quite a bit of work in India and Africa, and looking at the way that they perceive change management for their cultural norms and I don't know where it's going to go I, I, I really don't know um, but what I do recognize is that um, there's an appetite there and I think going forward into the future these developing growing economies are going to recognize the benefits of change management recognize the benefits of supporting and enabling people to deal with change more successfully as they go through rapid change themselves uh, societally as well as the organizations communities etc you know the whole setup i think that's going to be somewhere to watch and maybe those of us that are in the currently high developed western societies are going to be looking in the future to how we work with these new spaces as they develop and grow and also start to think in a way that says 
what are they bringing to the table that we don't know about that we can learn from these areas because i think there's a lot of learning to be done in the change space and i think that maybe future research into change and change management application may well be focused on new communities new cultural identities new approaches to uh, societal norms as we take things forward so i'm going to leave it there thank you very much for the time um my contact information can be shared i'm more than happy to talk share engage whatever with people um even though i'm based in toronto i do travel all over the world and i'm frequently in europe maybe four five six times a year quite often um so you know always happy to connect in person as well um but thank you very much for the opportunity um really thrilled with this and um I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and your conversations. Thank you.